and ain't nobody hiring me. Too black, too strong for this fucking little system, man. No Uncle Tom, so I'm fucking up that little plan. So fucking scared that I might just up and retaliate. You ask me why, shit, my heart be filled with hate. Motherfucker past, talking about shit that's happening here today. I'm on my knees, oh Lord, help me control this rage. I'm being teased like a beast locked within a cage. They're setting traps and almost kill me twice, you see. They won't feel safe till they got me hanging from a tree. I'm still running, but I got the Lord on my side. Poor drinking the corner for my homies that have fought and died. Ain't nothing changed, I still live my life in fear. I ask you, God, where we go from here? What's up? What's up, up everybody? Hey, What's happening? Man. In Barilla, man, we up in here. We up in here. Mm -hmm. Another week, man. We're about to palm tree, baby. You feel me, baby? <laughs> so look, we we hit that wall and style all y'all today. We got yeah. a, we got a good one today, but uh, before we get into it, you already know how we you know we been home into how our week was. Yeah, so man. I'm gonna start off, bro. How was yeah. your week? I mean, my week been um, so far thus far. Last week, I'm um, counting to this week from last Wednesday. Uh, it's been it's been productive. Um, growth. I'm learning to be more myself mm -hmm. and not um not be so hard on myself at the same time, you know. Learning this relax a little more. We will be the outside. Yeah, man, boy, I would I would, I would, I would Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I've been I mean I'm mean, giving myself um a, a break, basically, you know what I'm saying? Okay. You know, so I'm learning that, taking a lot of stress off, you know what I'm saying? Yoga. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah yoga good. Um, Everybody think you're talking about yogurt. No. Nah. <laughs> the, the actual yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, that right there, you know, and um staying flexible. Um and moving forward, reading, reading. I'm I'm reading a book called Man Up, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's uh my partner, my partner sent me the book, you know what I'm saying? So I'm reading stuff. I'm just reading different things, you know, learning different things. You yeah. Know, understand myself more. So I've been good. Yeah. So you know, my week it's been it's been it's been solid. So you know, I gave a little shout out to the um to the to the trash people. Oh they yeah. They gave us a new dumpster. I mean new trash can. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I come back this week just passed, so they don't empty my little trash no more. So I guess I mean I ain't getting no instructions to it. I guess you can't use our small garbage can no more. So they just left that. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we can't use that. But uh, if anybody out there work for the city, let me know what's going on. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's obvious. <you> know? <laughs> so that was that was, uh, dude dealing with these McDonald's. <laughs> I know, man. Good God, I'm I talking about it's over. in the drive. I don't know what I pick the wrong monitor to go to every time. Like the one I pick, always the one that be held back. Like you know, you they got the two lanes. Yeah, so I always the pick one. the wrong one where they don't come to that. <laughs> Shit, three cars go past. They want to ask me, can I take your order? <laughs> <laughs> I be so frustrated. Shit, it happened today. Man. I told my dude, we're going to stop this McDonald's. I can't, I can't with y'all. You know, I, I don't know, man. It's just it's sad. So I don't know. Man. My little rant. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, good. I mean, I, you know, yeah. You know I mean, I just shoot the shit, but uh, this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I be so high, too. You know. <laughs> Then remind you now, my damn wonder don't work. So I gotta get up there on my damn donut. <laughs> I need mean, 30 hours when I pull up there. I had to pull past the wonder, open the damn door, and reach back to grab me. Just get my shit. <laughs> you know, I had my mother was a baby boy. You know, baby boy that was in drive through. She's like, get my shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, but yo, but I'm just telling y'all, man. Yeah. Take that shit right. <laughs> like, you real talk, bro. This will be going on, bro. Hey, man. Yeah. 
Hey, I just don't even get it to him, buddy. I just, I be nice as fuck. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> hey, what's going on? Like, my shit went well, off. Like, I be, I'm the nicest dude. But then I get like, like, do it again. We doing it again. You know, I walk in back on. Hey, wait, man, on your face too. Shit. So I walk into my daughter. The dude was standing there. Dude said, "Man, I've been thirty minutes waiting." And then nobody came up to the register and asked me, "Can I take your order?" <laughs> like it's like, no, oh, no. He had the he had the counter. Look, he turned around. He told my daughter. He said, "You know, he told me first. He said, look, I've been here thirty minutes already." And then nobody walked up to the wrist and said, can I take your order? 30 minutes. And they can't take your order? Well, no, he, he finally, when I walk in and stood behind, he finally asked the lady, he was like, hey, can somebody take my order? <laughs> I'll do that way for that. Way for that. Yeah. Way for that. What up, Rosalyn? What up, sis? I see you in the house. I, look, we're going to get into that topic in a minute. We just, we just you know what I'm saying? Shout we talking about, like yeah, that. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, look. Come on to talk. What you watch the playoffs? I watch a little. I'm I'm not. I mean, why I ain't interested in that thing? Man, it ain't interesting just yet. Like okay. it's nowhere in the championship time yet. Oh, you the, and that what it is. Yeah, no now nah, I watch a good game. I'm telling you who been a good game. Now I, I like the Golden State, uh, Sacramento Kings. Them the, big good game. Oh yeah. They tied up two two. Oh, okay, so I definitely Go say game back. Okay. They, 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 these young boys, they, they can't be close. Okay, let me watch that. These young Step guns. Plan. Yeah. Okay. And these young guns bring it back to them. What? What? De'Aaron Fox and Monk and all of them, they bring it right back to them. Okay. I'm so that's that a good series. Okay, Sacramento Kings. You know, they might play tonight. State. They might okay. play tonight. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But everything else kind of been. <laughs> what about the. Um... LA shit. Lakers play shit. Lakers, um, think they finna do these dudes. They up 3 1. Uh-huh. I never thought Memphis was gonna beat the Lakers. I just didn't. Even though they had Memphis number two, they had Lakers number eight or something like that. What, why did they call the young? They don't have enough. Oh, really? I mean, I, I get the dude. He a star. Um, uh, Durant. Durant. Um, yeah, John, John Durant. Durant. Yeah, yeah LeGree. Mm-hmm. He a little star. <laughs> he ain't got enough weight. You still got to beat, you know, when healthy. When, when when big dude down low healthy, yeah, yeah, I mean, we LeBron, LeBron. they're they're beast now, yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. so that's I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, shout out to Miami, Miami got them um, yeah, doing Miami Milwaukee, uh, what's it called? Uh, it's tough, ain't it? And let, I'm gonna show you what they did with Atlanta. Atlanta Hawks played last night, right? Mm-hmm. Did so they win or lose? They won. So old oh boy hit a jumper, a deep three at the end. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So oh, remind trade. y'all, look, remind y'all, they had a concert today. Tomorrow at that stadium. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I read that on Facebook. They got a concert at the stadium tomorrow. They, they had and, a double book that month. Yo, they thought <laughs> <laughs> they, they done bet on them to be losing. Yo, they, right, yo, don't yo, worry about that. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> and they got to pray tomorrow. So now they got it. Some got to check. Yeah, right? I figure that. What up, Donna Moore? Thanks for joining, lady. Thanks for joining. Hey, y'all just, y'all look, we finna get ready to get into our topic in a minute, man. We just um, kind of shooting it a little bit. Putting y'all on a little community talk, a little sports, you know. Then we're gonna get into this thing. What we're talking about? Okay. You know, um, look. Uh, we also got I the uh, um, NFL draft tomorrow. Okay. So oh, it's not tomorrow. Tomorrow, yo. So we'll see if Bryce Young go number one pick. But they say that boy from uh, Florida gonna go first. You know, it's so up in the air. Um, a lot of people banging on Bryce Young. Now he probably will get picked number one. I just said if I was in America, I would pick him number one. He's too little for me. Okay. okay. Well, what, about, what about Drew Brees? Drew Brees showed just Drew Brees way bigger than that dude. He oh, was, really? Yeah, Drew Brees. What, he won the 185 team. One. <laughs> Bullshit. Oh, he Drew Brees was short. I mean, he's like 190. I mean, this dude ain't a big guy. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, ladies. So, definitely. Um, what else? Um, I seen some more. Oh, let's talk about my boy Dion. Man, Dion and clear the house. I mean, you think that's a good thing? Me person, yes. Cause his attitude. No, it wasn't attitude. Well, like, was if you were down one and let me at last year and you look like a buck sixty, what can I do with you? Now they brought me in the wing. But this the dude that got 150 yards, you talking about? Mm. On the on the on the on the on the cloud roll day or whatever. Now nah, dude left on his own. I don't think he pushed him out. I think dude kind. Of, he said he not what from what you know. What I'm saying I saw. Him, 
allegedly he mm-hmm. was saying that he didn't think that he could get uh get clean exposure like, like he that, didn't want it to exactly you know what that, I'm about? and Dion also told him like this team is half my team is not even here yet okay so they just all this hype right now right yeah because okay, so i ain't been following it so what happened he got rid of 40 46 players so they did but they making a big deal about it now they got look they ain't got 20 people on the roster you gotta have an 80 83 80. or 85 on the roster they ain't got the like 20 some stuff because he got rid of all of them but he's telling you all his players coming in in some he got players you know that be here so he making way but I did read up on where the players that had played on the team for last year, yeah. it said the coaches didn't even get them really a chance. It was basically like if we messed up, they rolled us and dogged us out. The players that Dion brought over, they kind of just oh, you so, know, so they said they ain't giving them a chance to compete. Yeah, it was yeah. like it was, well, just basically like y'all out of here anyway. But, I mean, but the thing is, once you saw that go, well, some of them did leave. And some got ran out of there. They get up out of there. Yeah. So, so, but know. I looked at them cats. I, I I saw some of the spring game. Those cats are little. I see why they went one in little. I mean, you can't win at one sixty, one eighty in the college. It, I'm I'm just sorry, you're just not going. Mm. Shit, you can barely win that shit in the league. <laughs> well, you you have certain certain <laughs> players that can, can that can do it at that age. But that's everybody right. can't be that. Everybody size. can't be that. Everybody. Nah, you know, lineman can't be that. <laughs> Nah, hell, See, the line a little skinny. Listen, I'm telling you, bro. Listen. Yeah. But yeah, um, but um, other than that, man. Oh, Mar talking about Heat Nation. Look, Mar. Mar said Dion would go. So Mar said Dion would go to a bowl this year, seven or eight wins, at least. I agree with you, homie. I agree. Do you really think so? I do. Yeah. Well, I, I in, who in, they play? I don't know. I don't know. He's out there in the pack. You got to play USC. He's on their top of line. USC, UCLA's, and stuff like that. But I'm talking about losses right there. Right? But them probably. I'm talking about that bottom middle half. Like okay, they excel in that. Yeah. So if okay. you get six wins, you're going to a bowl game. Right, right, right. I think right. Deanna gets six wins. Okay, well, I, I can see that just on him being him. I ain't right. talking about winning those, winning no damn championship. No, not no. Nah, that I mean that's not. Nowhere near ready. Yeah, like yeah. That, you know what I'm saying. I mean, I believe, I believe the confidence that he exudes that, that his 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 players grab from him mm-hmm. is gonna help him be the coach he needs to be. Because you know what I'm saying. I mean, he gives people. He's a motivational motherfucker. You know what I'm saying. Uh-huh. So you know what I'm saying. Let let that shit happen. Okay. And then he t- and to me when I see him, he trying to teach the kids. He ain't just basically just. Let's play football. He said, let's play football with a conscious to understand what's going on about the game and the business part. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm looking at. Yeah, so look, we're getting ready to get into our, uh, to our time <laughs> room, <right? laughs> like Real talk. So look, I'm, I'm just hitting you. Okay. Look, so look, we got, we, got, we got a special guest on tonight. And so the topic, brother, the top we're talking about that. look the topic we we're gonna be talking okay, about can we introduce we're gonna introduce her like oh she on yet yeah. she on but we're gonna introduce her you know <laughs> so i'm different to say what the topic about then we're gonna do okay, okay. Oh, yeah, that's All right. Right. so i'm just but she on now though yeah, yeah, yeah. we can see she can see us yeah she can see us you hey. see us hey Shonda. hey y'all oh, okay okay she on for she real she she on real. so yes i can oh, so we got a guest on her now Guest on tonight was Shonda Renee. I have seen her grow up. She's um she's my oldest daughter, best friend. You um, know, she have a child. So the topic we're gonna be talking about old school parenting mm-hmm. versus the new school parenting. And it's just based about like how we was raised and how it's so much different from now and, and what the new generation, how do they raise their kids and, mm-hmm. and what do they think? Mm. And so basically, we just gonna, you know, what I'm saying, pop it around. And I'm pretty sure we're gonna have other people want to talk about it, join in, because everybody, parent, everybody, everybody got to. Everybody, I mean, I mean, you have to get involved with the parenting because mm. you know, even if you're not a parent now, you want to set tones for the kids that's coming up behind the kids that's in front of them. No different, no different. So you want you want these kids to be good or have a good perspective of life, so you can move these generations forward. Mm-hmm. So we on um so Lashana, we want you to introduce yourself and then tell us 
uh, what you do, um, how many children you got, what's the names, I mean, how are you, you know, just let them know. The reason I say how are you, to let them know, give them perspective of, you know, uh, am I 20, am I 30, am I 40, am I 50 week this night? Okay, so my name is LaShonda, and I work at Children's Hospital, and I'm 23, and I have a three-year-old, and she'll be four next year, so. And what's her name? Her name is Paris. Okay. <laughs> well, 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 so she just had a birthday, right? No, her birthday is next month. Next yeah. month? You said, I thought you said next year. Well, I meant next month. She well, don't be lying on this month. We don't do the lying. Said, Paris is um, our oldest daughter, God daughter. Okay, that's yeah, great. That's Jay great. Jay, that Jay God daughter. Okay. Yeah. So, more different. Uh, so, let's young. So, just to kind of show you where we come from, all right? Okay. okay. Show you where we come from, how we was raised. Um, so I'm 49. Now Tim a little older than me. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm 56. So, yeah, Tim 56. So my 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 thing's even different from him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. See, I was even different. Yeah. So so we gonna start off with older. Here. Now now for me, I was raised um, basically in a single family household. Okay. Um, my mother was like 20 years old, was exactly 20 years old when she had me. So, and at that time, the, the social uh, makeup was different because a young woman was having a child out of wedlock at that age, it was looked at differently. So it was a different, different type of pressures that were on her at that time. And then with her being a very independent type person and having a son, she raised me to be more independent, more, uh, stern with me than it was when, she, when my sisters came along. Mm -hmm. So like, for instance, she'll slap me in the mouth and she'll talk to them, you know. So, so it changed from that time, just from from your stage. Right, from my stage to my sisters. Yeah. You know, she she talked more to my sister. They had their little thing, but she would try to actually hit me. Mm -hmm. Okay, like to show me some or whatever, you know, but, um, but she also would talk to so it was like she would teach lessons and then the things that I, I figured later on that actually scared her about me. She tried to get it, you know, like doing the exorcism or something mm -hmm. like that. She tried to exercise that shit. Yeah. Out of you know what I'm saying? Because it scared her about me. But as we grew and I grew and I grew and I understand myself, uh, we talked more. We became more of a, uh, a brother and sister as life went on because I got an uncle, her brother, me and him are the same age. So it was easy for me and him and, and my grandmother was very much a part of my growing up too. So I don't know, in, in the family as a whole, our families basically, everybody had a part in raising our kids. Everybody, my so aunts, great. my uncles, um, my granddaddy, my grandmother. Uh, we knew extended family. We always have family functions. We'll have, um, we'll do talent shows. We'll do all this. And it always was about family. Now, did, did they always get along? I was young, but I saw the term, turmoil at times. Now, the thing that I know now that I didn't know then is that they we should, we all as a family should have talked it out. But what, what happened then, they start separating mm -hmm. because of the turmoil because nobody wanted to talk to each other about it because the good times were so they wanted to always stay in the good times but in life we have to grow and in order to grow you have to have the sun and the rain but a lot of people don't want to accept that whole thing that's what we saw and my granddaddy grandmother and my aunts and uncles taught me those different values mm -hmm. we went to church yeah. i was baptized early you know what I'm saying? that was a big thing Sorry. you know what I'm saying? church church was a big thing for us yeah. Sorry. um making sure we did what we were supposed to do in school, making sure we were memorable to older people. Mm -hmm. um, respect, respect was a big thing. Respect, mm -hmm. respect was a very big thing. Yes, sir, no, sir. Yes, sir, no, sir. You better not say, yeah. 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 Huh? Boy. Huh? Yeah. Boy, yeah. Gotcha. You knew you found that out early. I, I, like that, they, your baby three years old. Mm -hmm. Er, you say, yeah. That mouth you hit a couple times. You yeah. won't say, yeah, no more. So that's how it was. So yeah. for so for mine was more, I mean, even coming off yours, um, respect always was big. Um, we it was more more 
what you say really don't matter. It's what I say. You do as I say. You can question, like we can like question what you say. You know, if we if we thought that we couldn't really, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Voice it. Voice it. No, nah, you better not voice. You we we voice amongst each other. Exactly. So just parenting been so much different. Like I had different levels of I got older children, I got younger children. I just know that we older, we more stricter. As we got the but younger now, now we're talking about how you were parenting. Now, as far as our parents, yeah, okay. like, it was always strict. It always was always strict. more of a but you grew from your parents and saying yeah. that it's better because as a kid you be like damn when i have kids man i don't want my kid to you know go, go through, through. Mm-hmm. or yeah, have to yeah. deal with some of the stuff we had to deal with so you change a little i wonder bit. how many people actually say that because i you you, you, you I act like them. you act like you're speaking my language because i want to okay, okay like even like we was in church every sunday right all day on sunday so when i got old i always said Shit, when i get older it's some sunday i ain't gonna want to go to church Shit, yeah. i ain't got to go and so I did that, right? Um, and I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people did it too. So I just want to give Rashonda your point of view as far as parenting on your level now. Like, how is it for you? Okay, how I parent or how I was? And first, tell us how you was brought up. And then, did it change on your parenting, on your child? Okay, so how I was brought up I would say um, I wasn't brought up in like a big family. Okay. So like it was like I was my mom and my dad. It went like oh your auntie could do this, your grandma could. Well, my grandma could. Like it was like my mom and my dad, and they was always the mama, daddy, mama, daddy. And my grandma and my granddaddy they helped, and we went over their house every weekend or whatever. But like we was really like home with our mom. We didn't have a big family where everybody can get onto. Like, you know how they be like, the village can raise a child? Village can raise, yeah. I wasn't raised in an environment like that. Gotcha. Okay. So, I feel like that affects how I parent because I'm one of them, like, I mean, certain people in my baby life can say something to her, discipline her, but, like, I don't play that. My so, baby, everybody like, can't talk to your kid. Everybody she, can't. But it, it, I'm the type of person, like, I don't know, it within reason. Yeah. I had, like, you would get in trouble in school, the teacher could beat you, uh, grandma don't get you, yeah. and don't get you. Yeah, I don't. That, that's not me. And that, and it really piggyback piggies back off of the fact I wasn't even raised like that. Like if yeah. I did something, you would tell my mama. My mama was gonna get me. Yeah. My dad was gonna get me. But, but exactly. in the type of household where like they mm-hmm. they they handled it. They gonna handle it. Don't hit my child. Don't do that. You can discipline her. You can say something to her. But physically, it was always like my mom and my dad did. Yeah. With me, I'm basically like the same way with my daughter because like it's not a village. I do everything. My parents help me, my grandparents help me, but I do everything. I'm there every day doing so it. it's nothing, it's nothing you do different how your parents were. It's nothing you tweaked a little bit, kind of like, well, I ain't like this part what my mom and dad did, so I don't want to put that on my child. Yes, and with me, to me, I feel like the biggest difference. And I seen it because my sister is 26. Okay. I'm three. My brother is my brother just turned 17. And then Paris is three. So mm-hmm. you see the difference. No. Uh, down, like, I feel like my sister probably was the one who got the worst out of everybody. Cause she was the oldest. Oldest always get it. The you oldest. Know, the you get it. oldest. <laughs> you feel me? Yo, the oldest. Hey, 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 how you doing? Oh. You all right? <laughs> okay. So like, I was the middle child, so I felt like I kind of got away with a little more than my sister could. And then I was the type, like, my parents, like, we, we grew up getting weekends when we was younger. I feel like everybody got weekends, but I feel like that's one thing about me. I really try not to do as much. Like, as far as, like, I got discipline, her. Huh? I'll pop up. I get the belt and hit her one or two times, but, like, I'm, because of how I was raised, I'm real big on, like, beating her. I did something. I personally, I don't like. So you don't like you you don't like what you don't like the the, the whipping. I don't like to, but I do what I have to. Do. Like you know, if you don't if you don't discipline your child, you don't get on your child. They're gonna be wild. They're gonna do what they want. They're gonna do yeah. whatever. But I feel like me, I really try to implement gentle parenting. Like. But you but you know, I was raised a certain way, so it's still ingrained in me. Like my first instinct be to beat the belt. But you know, I, you know, 
You know what's funny is that um, you know, by you saying that, it mean it it, it it sounds great because gentle parent to me is saying that if I'm parenting in a gentle way, when I get a little excited or get a little hype, you have to understand that tiny hey tiny hey no you know. You have to understand that I'm, this you don't, I don't want you to do that, and that can take away the actual pity. Yeah, like you know, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Just by the change of your vibration, right? I'm saying like I try to talk more. Like it's really frustrating. Like as I get frustrated, I'm human, and you know you, you hear her running around now. So, doing- so 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 what do you do for your 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 um your self help? Um, my, okay, so like I became a parent when the whole spiritual journey. Everybody started going like their spiritual journey, right? Um, uh, like really learning like i've read books i got books in my phone audio books in my phone like how to talk so that a toddler can understand you how to break generational curses like understanding that trauma is passed down from generation to generation to generation so it was like i really put myself through school like i really taught myself so so, so you you, you're saying that you really love your child enough that you will learn What's the best way to do the things that need to be done to bring her to a, 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 the best future? That's what you're saying. Say that again. You was willing to say that you would do whatever it took. Whatever. It took you to learn something new to bring yeah. your child to the best future that she could have. You was about that. Yeah. Like, they really like about it. Love from- that. I love that right now. And that's, a 20, that's a 20 year old generation, people. Because. When you become a parent, you just think about a whole lot of stuff you never thought about before being a parent. You know, well, I didn't like this. And I have the right to do this differently with my child. Yes, ma'am. Yes, let me give you that. Come on, let me get to You get what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. And that's why I say our generation, like, we get the most talk about, oh, we the worst generation. We wild, we this, we that. But when you look on the other hand, we really got some innovators in our generation because who who really started the whole? Well, I'm not saying we started it, but like we the generation that embodies the self love healing yeah. spiritual journey. Like we the we yeah. on the forefront. Like Gen Z is so emotionally intelligent, and they are so smart. Why? Because your history your history gonna bring it to you. No. See, this, this thing been this thing been going on for a while. It's genetically. It's the waking up process. The waking up doesn't start in one generation. It starts over time. Yeah, like every generation does has done every, their every part. generation brings their their, their their put they pass the baton. They pass the baton. So yeah. no generation really has an exclusive hold on the awakening. The awakening is a whole yeah. Our ancestors that went through the slavery went through. What, I ain't gonna get to. I ain't gonna. I'm, I, I could go a whole lot of ways with that, but. Understand that we all link together. You know what I'm saying? And, and don't let nobody tell you that your contribution is not a contribution to the betterment of who we are. Your contribution is just as important as everybody else's contribution because all that comes through you, just like it comes through me and everybody else. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Look, we got another guest on here, right? Who's that on here, man? Come on here. Hey, how you doing? I am I am a father, a friend, and a fool. I want to I want to give a shout out to that young lady that said, uh, "Generation Z." I will co-sign that. You guys are the most emotionally. Yeah, like generation I've seen. Like we've made it our personality trait. So yeah, I will give y'all that. I will give y'all that. And I disagree with the young man that uh, said there's no one generation. Uh, our generation stopped the singing. The Rodney King version. The Rodney King. You know, we used to be the marchers. You know, Dr. King was the march man. You know, that generation, they marched. They, they did all that. Our generation after Rodney King, man, don't play with us. We started the rebellious. The rebellion against the BS. Black Panthers Panther didn't do anything. Yeah, they did. They oh, did, but like you said. Oh, so that generation, did. so that generation that passed that down to us. Ah, uh, let me finish. Okay, yeah, let me respond to that. The Black Panthers did start something. 
Now, just like I'm going to take the credit for the rebellion, we also got to take the credit for the bullshit. That was the Black Panthers that turned into Crips, Bloods, Disciples, Vice Lords. Mm. We also started that as well. So it goes hand in hand. It's, it's good and it's bad. But the thing is, we got to learn to evolve. The thing right now is evolution. You can't stay stuck in one way. If you don't evolve, then you're not growing. And parenting is evolving. I have one, two, three. If I got to go in my head and do that, that means I got a lot of children. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got six kids. Okay. Them first three was raised by two generations, my mom's generation and mine. And the other ones was raised, ooh, ooh, different, I'll just say that. My first daughter is a certified fool. I mean, a lunatic. Mm-hmm. But I got to take some credit in that because she was raised by a young man that was a lunatic. You did? I wasn't ready to have no children. I thought I was. I was ready to, I thought I was ready to be a father. I was just ready to be a dad. It's a difference. Okay. A father's going to be there and raise that child. A father's going to give guidance. A dad is pretty much just going to be the friend. And you have to be a little bit of both of them nowadays in order to raise a child. And another thing, you got to be willing to listen to these children and understand where they're coming from so you can tell them where they need to go. You can't just be hard on them all the time. My first three, Goon City, old school, born in 1973. This is how I'm going to raise my children. Shut the blank up, sit the blank down. I'll knock you in the next week. That's who I was. Okay. I'm not that same guy anymore. You do not have to beat your children into obedience. If you think about it, man, I had to talk with a young lady up out of Atlanta, man. And we just had a good vibe one day, man. I met a man. We sat down and we started talking. And she opened my eyes to something. Well, I agree with her. I'm not going to say she opened my eyes, but I agree with her. Well, she made the statement that, man, a lot of we we have to look back and realize that if you were born in 19 anything, 19 anything, you ain't nothing but a rock throw away from slavery. And that means our parents was raised by. We have generations upon generations that was raised with a slave mentality. We raised our children. We raised a lot of our children with the master and slave mentality. Go and get them switches and bring them back and I'm going to beat your ass when you do something wrong. Man, that is mental trauma. When you think back on it now, don't get me wrong. The way I was raised, I wouldn't change it for nothing in the world. I feel like it helped me maybe be a better person. But I learned to grow and evolve, not only with the lessons I was taught as a kid, but with the lessons I learned as an adult. And I, you have to keep learning every day. Yeah. Who wants to wake up every day and stay the <laughs> same? You have to evolve every day you wake up. If you don't, you're going to stay asleep. That's why they call people with sense, oh, you woke. I had one of my homeboys tell me, man, you too woke. Well, I ain't trying to be too dead, bro. Yeah. You need to make that make sense, my nigga. Shit, that, that, that's a compliment to me. Motherfucker told me one day, Kim, man, you too woke, man. I know who you used to be. Yeah, bro, I know who I used to be. This ain't who the fuck I am. And tomorrow, I might be somebody different. But life is what it is. I salute y'all for having this conversation, man. It is well needed, man. And we need somebody from every generation in here, man. For real. Appreciate it. This has to stop. To be honest, man, this shit finna sound corny as hell, especially coming from me. Bernie Mac came up with a phrase saying, fuck them kids. Bernie Mac was a fucking comedian, man. A fucking comedian. He meant that comical. When you say fuck them kids and you act like fuck them kids, you saying fuck the future. Come on, man. Yeah. Grow up, man. Yeah. We not, not just the children need to grow up. We need to grow up as parents, man. And then this shit don't stop. Like I said, you have to wake up every day and evolve and try and be better as a person every day. You have to be better as a parent every day. My last three kids, I do not raise them like I raised my first three kids. My last three kids, they be my first three kids be looking at my last three kids like, oh, dad is soft on you. No, dad was wrong a lot of times with y'all. That's what it was. I ain't soft with them. I just see my mistakes that I made with y'all and I evolved and I adjusted. 
and I apologize for the BS that I put a lot of my older kids through, but they great kids, man. That first one is a fool. But hey, it is what it is. I know where she got it from. I know where she got it from, and I'm working with her. And I ain't gave up on it yet. And here go another thing, man, that we got to stop doing. And that is get the fuck out of 18. Get the fuck on. You grown. Go on about your business. Man, they mind ain't ready. They mind ain't ready. We, gonna talk about about we have to hold them a little bit longer, man, to make sure that they ready before we send them out here in this messed up world. Because that world ain't going to play with them. We I mean, might. The world won't. LaShonda, I think LaShonda had something to say. What you Come on, son. Come with me. I'm here today. Because it was so funny because when you first said something about the podcast earlier today, like I was at work on the computer and I was just typing down like key points I want to make. Like I got to say this. I have to say this. No. And he spoke on like everything that I typed down. And when I first started like my journey to be a better person, to be a better, to be a better person, just to be better, I, the first book I read was called I didn't hear you just broke down and explained how generational trauma works. Like it talked about the fact that like a few generations ago we were enslaved. Like we went through gruesome and horrible things and that's still in our DNA. Like it's still in us. The things that our ancestors went through, everything, like it's still in us. And it's that hurt and that pain is going to continue to get passed down and passed down and passed down to somebody to somebody be like, you know what, this ain't it. Like, somebody has to be, somebody has to be bold enough to be like, this ain't it. Like, I deserve better. My parents yeah, this ain't what's up. Their parents deserve better. My children deserve better. Who, my child, the children my child have, they deserve better. Like, we just deserve better as people. Yeah, Tyra said post-traumatic slave syndrome is real. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's suffering from stuff that we didn't even take part of. Like, we had no idea. The slave trade, everything <laughs> do, we're still suffering from that to this day. To this they day. To this, this day. <laughs> <laughs> to this day. <laughs> we still suffering from you, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah. sure that you at 23. Understand that generations and generations and generations of us, it's still us. It's still us. And it starts with the same people. Somebody has to be like, we got to break it. it. We got to change. It's easier said than done, man. I was talking to a partner of mine, man. Uh, and here's my point I was talking to a partner of mine early today. He was a stone fool, man, when we was growing up. Uh, he shoot that pistol. He gonna throw them hands. <laughs> he gonna sell some dope. You know, this is the nineties. You feel me? This when I was in my teen years, yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, my man wind up. You know, life wind up going to prison, coming home. Long story short, out of all the nonsense he did as a adolescent, right now, man, this man is a youth minister, and he goes back to his old projects. Three to five. No, I say. One to three times a week, man, giving back to the community. Okay. And I look back on him. I had to tell him today, man. I told him how proud I was of him. And he gave God all the glory. He was like, man, God reached down out the dirt and changed me. I got to do the same thing for the children. Mm -hmm. And I know this guy. And I know God got a hold on him. But God ain't got a grip. I know this guy. If you tremble, he will flake out and go back to the old ways. But the thing is, at least he's trying to make a difference. So and a lot of folks don't make a difference. They just want to criticize the ones that do. Yeah. And we got to stop. And I was talking to him earlier today about the Willie Lynch uh, laws. You did? Yeah. Which is crazy to me. This man told us 400, over 400 years ago, what the fuck he was going to do to us. Yeah. He told us what he was going to do. He gave us the recipe. And yet we still eat the food. Put the black against, put the dark skin against the light skin. Put the men against the women. And what they didn't under what they act like they still don't see, put the young against the old. And it's gonna divide and control the African American male for years and years to come. And here we are, almost 500 years later, still falling for that same bullshit. Even though we know the poison they put in our food, we still eating it. It's up for it's up to us to take a diet, man. We can't keep eating that bullshit and then expect for us to be healthy, spiritually, mentally, and physically. As a community. As a black family, we can't do that. 
No, don't get quiet. I told you I was waiting on this shit. I've been waiting. I can't even get my camera right. Don't get quiet. Come on. Get more folks in here. Get somebody grandma in this motherfucker. That's what I'm gonna get. Somebody grandma in here. I'm a granddaddy. Get somebody great grandma in here. You know my thing. Look, so I understand it because I got I got five children myself, and they all stacked. I got older older kids and I got younger kids, and I noticed you know we were older than we had kids. You know, we were still teaching what we was taught at that time, right? So Fact. it was more strict. Fact. Yeah, it's more strict on our older children. Because even our older children be like, damn, damn, mom, y'all got soft with them. Y'all let them do whatever. <laughs> and when Kim said, no, I just realized some of the stuff we did, baby, wasn't right. Wasn't right. So you just it wasn't right. It. But I also, the the the, the easy we, we got on these children, not easy. These children start to feel uh, more. Oh, they privileged. Oh, they, they privileged. And we, we, we give them that. Right? We give them that. We got to uh, take it. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. My, my children, they picking like, like back in our days, if our parents cook one meal, they cook one meal, you either eat that or your ass starve. Right? Yeah, we right here cooking two or three different. Two or three different. <laughs> <laughs> like These motherfuckers throwing all the cooks around here. <laughs> Bro, like, look, look, when someone says a sandwich, my younger kids be like, what? What is a sandwich? I be like, a, a meal, dinner, bologna, some chips, and Kool-Aid? Or, that's a meal for me. My kid like, damn, we ain't on that. You know, and so I I, I mean, it, it, it's hard juggling. So, so so the question is, do you, do you deal with them and compromise with us? Do you dictate to them what's going to happen? When they when they draw me to where like I feel like they they downright just trying. like they downright uh what you not trying me but they downright uh they privilege they feel like you know I would be like oh you motherfuckers okay I'm gonna show you now they drew me there and I would be like let me reel y'all back a little bit today we eat noodles okay you you, you bring it back down I you're know. like today we eat cheap mm -hmm. so you know they don't care they like mom up. Put some onions in it with that seeds. Well, see, that's good, though. So, yeah. And I would, I would bring it out now is ingenuity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? See, one thing I've noticed about the kids in the in the, in the generation that, because I have a 23 year old in the house with me now. Yeah. And um, I've been with him since then. Like, once I got out of prison, mm -hmm. I left my I left my son my son I now I taught my son all the way till he was like six years old. Me and him was was tight, but I was in the street heavy. Mm -hmm. So I left him at six. Next time I saw him, basically he was 24. Okay. Okay. So my 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 son that's with my wife now, he was 15 when we got together. Gotcha. So now I get a chance to raise a teenager. Now what I'm seeing <laughs> is that these gen and he generation Z. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I have a problem Ooh. with his part of Generation Z and the people he ran with, they're too lackadaisical about life. They just carefully, you know. Break that down. Break that down. Break that down. They too what about life? Lackadaisical. That means that's a big word. That's a big word. It has a lot of syllables in it. Say that. Break that for me. I'm here to learn, bro. I'm here to learn. You went to Woodlawn. You got to. I went to Woodlawn. Yeah, take that nigga while he ran here playing. Oh my bad. He might as well with the wood. He hate with everybody. Hey, but let's try to tell him what that means. All right, hold on. My computer going slow. Yeah, hold on. You pulling it up? That shit sounded like something off a Disney movie, like a days or what? That sound like some Chickabella do. I want to watch that. What is that? I don't want to be like a day Whatever that word is. I'm going to break it down. Okay. So the. Dictionary definition of lackadaisical is lacking enthusiasm and determination. They're carelessly like, and that I wanted to talk about it when it comes. Oh, I got a point on that too. Go ahead, baby. Like oh, wait I, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now I want you to confirm that that was a word. It is, it is a word, but I just wanted to know what it was. Cause I'm ready to use that shit on the motherfucker tomorrow. What you talking about, nigga? You acting real like a danger, bro. Stop acting too like a danger. So like a danger ass. Yeah, I'm waiting to use that. I want to goddamn improve my vocabulary. Okay, go ahead, babe. What's your point? 
<laughs> so I feel like that is one of the drawbacks to gentle parenting. And I had to realize that because I'm raising a three-year-old and she's turning four. And you you have to have balance. Yeah, you like, do. You 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 have to have a little bit of old school and a little bit yeah, of a little bit of new school, yeah. Because where there's no where there's no uh where there is no consequences, chaos. You have to have consequences in life. You have to tell your children that it's consequences in life. If not, you let loose a fool. You let loose a demon, something that is non-productive to society. You gotta find that balance because mm -hmm. the generation they are spoiled. Because like I said, I'm older. Like I got little cousins, little brothers, little sisters, like and they do have that type of mindset where it's like, we be so busy trying to make it better for them. Better for them. We'll mess up and make it too easy for them. Make right. it too easy. Yeah. And they don't realize that it's real out here. Like, it's hard out here. Like, and, that, and, and that's us. That's not them. Yeah. They, yeah. It's, it's, we're it's, not teaching them to realize that it's stuff out there because we want to give them this yellow brick road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The thing is, as parents, we have to give them the same balance that we're trying to have as adults. Mm -hmm. Okay, the balance is I have a I have a, I I'm a real I am a real nice loving guy, but I also have another side of me. Okay? And this side, I have to embrace that side as much as I embrace this side. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be times Ying and yang. you got to you got to do it, and we have to teach them that. Listen, I want to give you the best in life, mm -hmm. but you got to understand that you got to start right here. You don't deserve what I have. I did this. Let me show you how you can earn. It might not be the way I earned it, but let me show you how you can earn your way to getting the things you want from me that I can give you. That's giving them a job in the house. Yeah. Take Cut the grass. Then I think about giving you a new skateboard. If you cut it every month, I'll make sure you got this, 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 and that. You just don't get it. You, I just don't give it to you. You earn this from me because I have it for you. It's yours. It's your inheritance. But let's work for in-house. But see, the only thing about that, like with these kids these days, shit, when you say cut grass, they will laugh at you. They're like, I go on the internet and make my own money now. Like it's like cutting grass. I seen some kids like I pay you twenty five. You know, back in the day, twenty five dollars was a lot of money. Lot of money. money. Okay. Yeah. Every everybody ain't gonna do the same thing. If they got an internet groove, yeah. you you foster that. You push that. Yeah. Like like your your baby just won a war for art. Mm -hmm. You push that. Gotcha. Yeah. That's their thing. Mm -hmm. They got a knack for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very creative. So you push that. You you watch that child. Mm -hmm. That child will show you his talent, her talents. And once they show you their talents, you as the adult with the consciousness of what you're seeing, you start mapping the way for them to have the best of what they know what's going to open the door for them. Yeah. And I think a lot of parents don't know, don't know uh, versus, like, if, you're, if your kid got a chance, I don't know how to put them in that direction. Let me let me show you this. Let me show you something. See, this is what, they, this is what they're doing. Okay. They keep us working, 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 working. Mm -hmm. Busy, 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 busy. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what I did. When I got out of prison, they kept me working, 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 working. When I hit that 10 hours of that work thing, I changed clothes, put on another outfit, and go do something for me. See, these children are for me. Mm -hmm. If I can work for you, if I gotta work ten hours here, I can give my I can give my kids four hours. Yeah. Yeah. I can give my kids four. I ain't gonna give them twelve, cause bitch, you might wanna give me twelve hours. So I got at least two more hours to deal with them. I got you. I got I'm gonna you. get to know these folks, man. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna love these folks. I'm gonna take and sacrifice my time. I might lose sleep. Mm -hmm. I might be tired. Sleep when I die. I sleep when this motherfucker over. Yeah. They gonna be ready. Oh, my bad. My bad. My bad. You are right. I want to touch on. I want to touch on a statement you made that we work so hard that we trying to show these kids a yellow brick road and let them know that life is okay. But just like that yellow brick road that was in the movie The Wizard of Oz, along that yellow brick road, even though that road was made out of gold, go after the Tin Man, the, the Scarecrow, the Lion. Look at. How many obstacles they had to walk past, even on that yellow brick road? Yeah, and it takes people to guide them. Exactly, and I'm saying, 
I'm not saying we're not giving them the yellow brick road and the obstacles. I'm saying you showing them that, but you ain't showing them the obstacles. Show them yeah. how. Yeah, that's my point. That's my point exactly. Yeah, you was right about that. But we not we you right. You got to show them. You got to show them the what's them liberty people name? They ain't elves or dwarfs. What the, the munchkins? You got to let them know. Hey, it's gonna be some munchkins out there. That's gonna be the children they're gonna have. It's gonna be some flying monkeys out there. That's gonna be the gang thing that they're gonna run across. It's gonna be a wicked witch. That's gonna be the government. It's gonna be a lot of things out there along that yellow brick road that we providing for them. They just gotta learn to avoid them. And it's gotta be us to show them how to avoid them. And here's another thing, man. That, 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 that. So what y'all we gotta tell the kids about us being a freak me. You got to tell me you the freak. <laughs> They gotta be doing that. 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 They gotta be like when and they gotta be like us. Yeah, yeah. And then you put a whole guilt trip on that when exactly. they do little thing. Oh, I take my mom yeah. and dad and everything. And you, you exactly. a whole freak. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm getting. Male at. or female. That's all I'm getting. You the whole freak. Yeah, that's all I'm getting. Don't put that guilt shit on yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. Teach them yeah. as they get understanding of what they're doing. If, if they and then grow with them, you ain't gotta give them the whole thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if they if they 17, 18, 19, yeah. let them you be know how you was when you was a kid. Stop acting like you was a perfect kid. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Stop acting like you was a perfect kid. You know how you was when you was a kid. Shit, don't 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 make me tell you when to do it. I don't know you damn kid. Even Donna Moore. Donna Moore just chimed in. She said, tell them the truth no matter what. No matter there what. You go, I'm firm believing that. Don't lie to me. I tell my children, I raise I raised all six of my children with this their philosophy right here. I don't care if you kill the president. I'm going to be the one to help you get out of town. But the thing is, you got to tell me the truth in order for me to help you. Don't lie to me about nothing. I'm your dad. Yeah. 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 I'm going on with your mic. Hold on. In and out. Your mic. Your mic going in and out. I might have hit the mute button by mistake, man. You know, I'm old, my nigga. I don't know how to work this shit for real. Oh, yeah. You want them grandma granddad? Hey, baby, I don't know how, baby. Okay, I had my hand on the mute button. Okay, I had my hand on the mute button. How you? How my volume is right now? Before we get out of here, I want to... I do you have anything else to say before we, before we let y'all out of here? I do, man. Um, another thing as far as the kids go, man, you got to respect these children. You got to give these children a certain amount of respect, I man. I hear you. I they, something going on right here. They are oh, muted. I can't hear is you. Muted? Is you muted over there? See if y'all microphones are, are muted. Yeah. Check and see if y'all microphones are muted. Yeah. I can hear y'all. I can't hear y'all at all. Look, I can't hear y'all. Look, but that, look, listen, can you hear us? Yeah. If you can hear us, look, thank y'all for coming on. I have something going on with our I don't know. We can't technology hear here. Well, look, we gonna we gonna we gonna do this again. We ain't gonna leave it right here, but we we can't hear nothing. Try it again. Gonna try it again. Yeah. Ain't nothing we can do. You can resend it if you want. Right so look, we yeah. gonna we gonna do this again. We are gonna invite y'all on with more people. We gonna have a big forum. We are gonna go live and have a big forum. And then and then we are gonna try to do some of this stuff live. Yeah. Okay, so we can really talk to our parents of all generations. Let's see how what's let's see how that's work with. Us. Uh, All right, better up. We're gonna get ready to get out of here, man. We enjoyed y'all. We we appreciate y'all. So look, I will be one love, man. One love, one love. See y'all later. Yeah. So we look. Video. No, we ain't finished. I mean, we just we 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 say yeah, yeah, we still got you know what I'm saying. We still got a minute, a couple minutes. Look, man, we enjoyed the um the guests we had on. Uh, something happened where we couldn't hear them no more. Yeah, I, I but y'all were hearing, yeah. man. That's our fault because we didn't. I don't know what's going on. We yeah, didn't. I mean, so, you know, they were saying good thing. We had a lot of uh, nice conversation. I mean, we're going to revisit this. We got a lot of stuff we're going to revisit. We're going to try to revisit. A lot of times, we're going to do a live in person show. Yeah. We're working on that right now because we want, pe we want people to be able to be and see. 
and be around people who really care about their families and the neighborhood and their futures. And so I think it was a great topic, man, because check out what's going on, man. Um, it'll trickle down to where I'm starting to see more females getting killed now. That's like, crazy. You just had two girls yesterday, last night, over there in Kingston at the store. Uh, got targeted where somebody just walked up on them and shot them, killed one and shot the other girl. One died and one survived. Well, over there at the Sweet Dance at the store. Nigga, dude walked up. Oh, I don't know, dude, a female. I don't know. Allegedly. They, allegedly. They said uh, somebody walked up. They're in a the crowd now. There's a group of girls standing mm. outside of the store. Somebody walked up and tried to shoot some Pacific girls. Yeah, the girl, the girl ended up running the How store. Old were they? 19. I found that the girl died in 19. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, her mom is on my Facebook. I saw what she like. Her mom and her auntie. They were like, they're my niece. And, you know. Mm -hmm. This got to stop. I mean, and it, it only stops by us changing who we are. Us taking a reflective look in our homes, in our schools, in our churches, in our grocery stores, in our backyards. Mm -hmm. Now, bedroom, everywhere we need to take a look at ourselves to bring our future to a better, more mm -hmm. tranquil peace, man. We don't need this right here. And then what's crazy, then you, you had the other female, or the other uh, incident happened where the female shot the other female and killed the other. Now, and that's a different incident. You saw the trigger down the female. Back in our days, right. females were doing this. Like, you didn't hear females kill each other or even get killed. It was more than men out there doing whatever. But now it's to the female, to the children, to the younger generation. We losing daily. Uh, what the four year old got shot the other day? I mean, it got to stop. The four year old. That now, that's just in Birmingham, Alabama. Now <laughs> that ain't even crossed. Now he, all this is coming from here. Here. Yeah. Now we we're not even talking global. We ain't talking yeah. in, in in Chicago. We ain't talking in Memphis. We ain't talking in New York. We talking Birmingham, yeah. Alabama. This is what's going on. This is this has to cease. I mean, the thing is, let's let's be let's be a city that show that we can be a city to come together and make changes within our society that can move us forward. Yeah. We don't have to keep doing the same thing. Yeah. I mean, hey, it's awesome. It's a bad wind that don't change. Just as well we got it like this, as well we can change it. We really can, but um, they gotta be a want to, man. Um, until we get sick and tired of being sick and tired of, of uh, sitting around talking about uh, we having a visual, we having yeah, uh, yeah, it's time to get the know, work, it's time to get your hands dirty. I mean, like, cause it's, get your hands dirty. it's starting to get home. Let's like, get out there. You starting to know these people that's dying. You start, so it's hitting around your door. And children, man, they children, children, it's wiping out a whole generation, dude. Man, we can't keep doing that because I love all of them. I, I love, love all of them. Donna Moore said it's a lack of self-respect um, that leads to no respect for others. And it's funny, man. It's like, you know, I, I don't want to harp on the younger generation so much, but when I see them, it's like they just don't have a care in the world for nothing. But I, I'm where actually, did they learn that? Though? I don't know. So here's my thing. I'm in the I'm well, in the why did why they, why haven't they unlearned that? I'm in a corner, I'm in the corner store yesterday. Right. A little kid, he probably 19, 18, maybe 21. He's in the package store. I mean, the store buying candy. Right. He in there with a gun this big, with the with the with the clip this long inside his bag. Now, remind he might have weighed 80 pounds. Mm -hmm. He's that thin. The gun bigger than him, mm -hmm. and he got to hold the gun. He can't. The gun about to fall down his pants. Mm -hmm. He got to hold the. The gun by the clip mm -hmm. while he getting the candy in the pieces mm -hmm. he buy from the store. He don't know what to do. I'm like, are we that? Is that rough? I mean, <laughs> I mean, who, who are they talking to? I don't know. See, I mean, we can, we can, we can always say like, okay, I, I look at it like this. If you have a three year old, say, say for instance, mm -hmm. and a three year old walking through the house. And go to the plug and start messing and pulling at the plug. What you gonna do? Tell me stop. You gonna stop? You gonna try to explain to him why, whatever. Yeah. So see these somewhere along that line of them them yeah. growing up, yeah. this didn't happen. Yeah. We we can't take credit for it not happening. Mm -hmm. Only thing we can do is recognize that that what 
that didn't happen. Somebody ain't. So from that point, he lost a lot of respect for not only himself, but even the people that raised him. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't know what that person, that child really basically saw okay. within their lifestyle. Their lifestyle. Okay, so now how can we get these these kids that have not been shown no love to understand that there is love? Because if you've never seen love, how can you recognize love that you've never seen? So everything that you looks like everything that you've ever seen in your life. So if you've been abused, you've been persecuted, you've been talked to rough, you've been blah, 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 whatever. When a person say, hey, how you doing? Oh, Jimmy. That's all you know. How are we going to reach out and touch <clears throat> and bring this love into a fruition to where they understand that <clears throat> as older people that have been through life and saw life and been in these survival modes that you're into mm -hmm. and things are becoming more open to where we understand that we can get more and, and you don't have to be in this mode, but this mode been passed out to you. Look, we got one. Um... Uh, we got another come in from Donna Moore. She said, have to be taught a better way by people who are willing to. Uh, we have to teach and show love. And we totally agree with you. You got to bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. Not, you brought out, came out with freak me. Bring them out. Bring them out. Uh, you, you twerk. Come, 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 come teach. If you twerk, you can teach. If you twerk, goddamn, you twerk, you can teach. <laughs> come on out, show them. I, I, I got them. I love and I watch you twerk. I, I was at Freak Me Night. I loved it. I no, loved it. We, I'm so scared myself because I'm like, oh, cause, cause we nigga did them dick do nothing. Hey, we love y'all. Look, we. I'm not nothing. <laughs> It, it yeah. wasn't me. We glad y'all joined us. Listen, that wasn't. It looked like it was me. <laughs> it was a great conversation. I promise you. And we gotta have this. It was not. I would. I, I thought it, it hey, wasn't me. For, hey, I'm gonna holler at y'all. Um, if you haven't liked us, like and follow now. What's happening? Uh, we have a t we have a Facebook page T O G Marilla. And That's we right. Have a YouTube page. T.O.G. Baruch's podcast. We're going live every Wednesday night. Every Wednesday night, come on in. Please join in, man. These conversations. And if you see ahead. somebody that might look like me on that freak night, <laughs> it was not me. <laughs> These conversations. I promise you. These conversations. Don't all that old man. stuff that dude was doing. They, they, listen, now. <laughs> I would not ever. All them, all them women, no. All them women that, that I did not know that it was a man. Yeah, the hunt is on, every step I take is with my gauge I'm selling dope, but I can't live on fucking minimum wage A young black man, now you know what that means, G A hard life, and ain't nobody hiring me Too black, too strong for this fucking little system, man No Uncle Tom, so I'm fucking up that little plan So fucking scared that I might just up and tally, eh? You ask me why, should my heart be filled with hate? Motherfuck the past, talking about shit that's happening here today I'm on my knees Oh Lord, help me control this rage I'm being teased like a beast locked within a cage They're setting traps and almost kill me twice, you see They won't feel safe till they got me hanging from a tree I'm still running, but I got the Lord on my side Poor drinking on the corner for my homies that have fucking died Ain't nothing changed, 